The National Broadcasting Company presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy, calling Washington. United States counter spies, especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. These counter spy reports to the American people are brought to you each week at this time. Now, the case of the captured contact. Hello. Mr. Harding? Mr. David Harding? No, this is Mr. Harding's assistant, Harry Peters. I am calling from Baltimore. I must speak to Mr. Harding in person. Did he not receive my letter? Who is this, please? I... I signed the letter only with the name Roland. Just a moment. Harding speaking. Mr. Harding, this is Roland. You received my letter, no? Uh, I'd like to know who you really are. Uh, full details, I, I cannot give over the telephone. But I give a name, Dr. Maximo. Dr. Maximo? Yes. I have been in your country lecturing on bacteriology. My real purpose was something else, and now I realize I have been making a terrible mistake for years. Yeah? I can correct it only one way, to tell everything to the United States counter-spies. Well, you're only 45 minutes by train from Washington. Oh, no, no, I dare not move from this hotel room. My life. What hotel? The, the Gainsborough, room 819. Huh? I beg you to come, Mr. Harding. What I must tell you is of the first importance. Well, I'll see about it, Dr. Maximo. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Harding... <laughs> Uh, young lady, this is Mr. Jones in room 819. You have a, I believe it is called a house detective. Uh, Mr. Blaine is his name. I believe my life is in danger. Would you please ask him to come to my room at once? And I say to you, comrades of this International Congress for Peace, our chief enemy in the world... Is America. Its ruling circles are composed of nothing but warmongers, imperialists, slaves of Wall Street, and enemies of the peace-loving democratic nations of the world. Now, at the end of the record, I guess, sir. Be glad, sir. What's the date on that? Um, July 12th, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Made by our Paris attaché during one of those fake peace congresses held by Iron Curtain followers in Paris. Well, I'll play a bit of our phone conversation with Dr. Maximo tonight. Yep. Hello? Mr. Harding? Mr. David Harding? No, this is Mr. Harding's assistant, Harry Peters. I am calling from Baltimore. I must speak to Mr. Harding in person. Did he not receive my letter? The same, boy. Who is this, please? I... I signed the letter only with the name Roland. Yes, that's the same man. Don't you think so, Peters? Sure, it's the same fellow. Well, here's our file jacket on him. Roland Maximo, graduate of the University of Cretania in 1911 at the age of 22. Makes him 62 now. Yeah. Became full professor of medicine specializing in bacteriology in 1919. Right after the First World War. Secretly joined the International Revolutionary Movement the following year. And that's the man who's been in this country for months, lecturing from coast to coast. On bacteriology. Routine reports on his lectures here, Chief. They say he'd end every lecture with a plea against bacteriological warfare. In the same breath, accusing us of planning to use it. I'm amazed he got away with it, Dave. Well, this was all before the Cold War turned hot. Well, Peters, if this man is ready, as he says, to turn against his masters in Catania, we'd better go see him. Oh, well, we can still easily make Baltimore by midnight, Chief. Well, I have the Baltimore field office send over a man, meanwhile. But let's hop. <laughs> Uh, mind my asking, Mr. Jones, uh, what kind of danger your life's in? I... I have been threatened. Have you the time, Mr. Blaine? Uh, it's uh, ten past eleven. 
I oughtn't to be sitting here in your room all night. I'm a house dick. My spot's in the lobby, keeping an eye out for bookies. And uh, bookies? A horse player and other kind of unwelcome riffraff. Oh. You a here? Some kind of hot shot? Hot shot? Yeah. Or say, hey, maybe you're a squealer. You're going to rat on your pals and they want to knock you over. Yes. Yes, Mr. Blaine. You might say I'm going to squeal and that my pals want to knock me over. Hey, what's that? It's fire. There's a fire in a joint. Hey, Mr. Blaine, wait. I'll tell you, there's fire. I gotta go see. You hear them all yelling? Uh, Mr. Blaine, I beg you, do not leave the room. You wait. I'll be right back. Mr. Blaine! doing in the lobby. I wanted you up in room 819 with Dr. Maximo. Well, I got here, Mr. Harding. The whole hotel was in an uproar. They said fire, and the fire chief wouldn't let me in, counter fire or not. Fire, Ellery? Eighth floor. Just now, they found out it was a false alarm. False alarm. Come on, room 819. Uh, Come on, Peters, Ellery. Uh, Call the house detective, Peters. No. No use. Three... Bullets. I'm Harding, Dr. Maximo. Who did this? I did not see. Door opened. I don't know. More important, my confession. You, you must catch my contact. Will lead you to everything. Your contact, yes. Name? Yes, his name. George. George what? Where? Never told last name. Only George. Small, small man. Yes, small man. But what city? Where? Left eye. Left eye? What about it? Left eye. They've silenced him for good, Mr. Harding. Yes. And we've got to find a man called George with something unusual about his left eye. One man among 150 million people. Listen, Eddie, um, this is the rest of what Mama writes. Yeah? They came this afternoon, special delivery. Uh, Oh, uh, next week your father has to be in Buffalo for a meeting of his fraternal organization. And if we could drive through Columbus... We could spend the weekend with you and Edward. The weekend? Well, I can stand it if they can, baby. Your old man's a pretty good kegler. Kegler? Bowler, fancy word. Oh. (laughs) What kind of a day at the shop? Mm, Blueprints, 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 as usual. What's for supper? I almost forgot. You going to be on the road again next week? No, hon, but, um... I've been talking with Sam about a good chance for a blueprint shop over in Cobbsville. Going to be a big industrial town. I thought we ought to open up there, get in on the ground floor. Cobbsville? Gee, we don't know anybody there. Well, not definite yet anyway. And and anyway, what's for supper? Salisbury steak. You mean hamburger. (laughs) Oh, maybe that's Claire Siegel. I saw her at the market. She said maybe she and Herbert... No, I'll be... brush her off. Honey, do it nicely, Eddie. Hello? Hello, George. Oh, yeah. This is Arthur. Oh, uh-huh. hiya. I have just had some good news from Baltimore. Yeah? You won't have to move to Cobbsville. You won't have to leave Columbus. You're quite safe here. Oh, fine. I shall be in touch with you soon for further assignments. Okay, Arthur. Don't use my name. Goodbye, George. Yeah. Uh, So long. That wasn't Claire Siegel, was it, Ed? Hmm? Oh, uh, no, it was uh, uh, a fellow I was in touch with on this Cobbsville business, but he says forget it. How soon is that Salisbury hamburger going to be ready? There are the lights of Washington, Chief. Well, it's obvious, Peters. Dr. Maximo's ex-comrades found out he intended to talk to us and pulled that fake fire alarm as a cover for liquidating him. Now, the next most important man to get is this George. 
with the strange left eye. How do we find George? Well, as Dr. Maximo traveled around lecturing, posing as a friendly scientist, he must have been reporting on the progress of American research in bacteriological warfare. Then George must have been a contact who met him from time to time on his travels. Yeah, that's it. The moment we get back to Washington tonight, we'll lay out on a map the exact itinerary Dr. Maximo followed. We've got the itinerary laid out, Chief. Ah, quick work. Get any sleep last night after we get back? About an hour. Lucky you. Here's the map room, Dave. Mm. Now, um, each pin on the map here represents a stopping place. Now, the dates of arrival and departure for each location are on the flags. Uh, land in New York, August 29th. Mm-hmm. And here's the typed-up schedule of the modes of travel that Dr. Maximo used. Mm-hmm. Itinerary took him coast to coast and back. Stopped in uh, these five, ten, twenty, twenty-two places. All either universities or industrial towns with important research labs. I'll tell you what, Peters. We'll prepare a directive to our field offices in these twenty-two localities. We want the details on everything Dr. Maximo did. Everybody he saw in each place. Maximo was a bacteriologist, Chief. His information was technical. Now, it follows that the contact had to know something about bacteriology. Maybe he had to make copies, microfilm, or blueprints. Yeah, right. Well, list all bacteriologists in the country. Every research laboratory with employees, present and past, even the clerical staffs. Then we'll cross-check that list against the list we get of people Dr. Maximo met. And somewhere among all these people, we've got to find George. You are listening to the case of the captured contact on Counter Spy. The chimes are your invitation to a bright Sunday evening lineup over most of these same NBC stations tonight. Tallulah MC is another gala broadcast of The Big Show. The Phil Harris Alice Faye Show brings you more delightful adventures. And then Heather Hopper presents dramatized stories of the stars. Now, back to Counter Spy. Dr. Phillips. My name's Taylor, United States Counter Spies. We're making up a national directory of all personnel in bacteriology in case of a national emergency. Now, I wonder if you'd mind helping us out. Hello, Professor Thorne. My name's Ellery, sir, United States Counter Spies. I've just arrived in Locust City. I'd like to come out to the university laboratory. Good afternoon, Mr. Zachary. Taylor, Counter Spies. You've got a large technical staff here in your company laboratories, and we're making up a directory. That's fine, Dr. Loomis. Now, if I could see your past... Oh, much obliged for your cooperation, Professor Marks. Um, just one more thing. About this man, George Rackett, who worked here as a laboratory technician three years ago, can we examine into him a little more, sir? There's the whole list, Mr. Harding. The names only. Well, the facts about them? On a card file out of my office. They're to be punched for automatic sorting. Well, have we got the dope on which of these were actually in the area of Dr. Maximo's trip at the time they made it? Yes, Chief. That's one of the classification symbols. Uh-huh. Now, the cards will be ready for the machines by early tomorrow morning, I'd say. All right, we'll run them off then. <laughs> I'm setting the machine now, Chief. Well, first, anybody whose first, middle, or last name is George. Right. And second, who were in the area of Dr. Maximo's trip? Symbol seven. Third, those with eye trouble, the left eye especially. All right, you... Of course, even at this speed, Chief, it'll take some time. There are thousands of cards.
78 cards called out, Chief. All right, now classify by areas and shoot them out to the agents in charge. But, Peters, the trouble is George is most likely not a real name at all, but a code name. That's a cheery thought. Morning, madam. My name's Taylor. I'm from the New Orleans City Directory, checking on all inhabitants. I understand you have a tenant here named George Sperry. Works for the University Laboratory. Excuse me, Mrs. T.J. George. I'm from the local civil defense organization. My name's Ellery. We're looking for volunteer aircraft spotters. All very interesting, Chief. Adding up to nothing. Every one of those 78 have clean records? Well, one fellow used to work at a lab in Kansas City. He turned out to be a minor embezzler from Philadelphia. Another man was an escaped convict. Two others were aliens who entered the country illegally. Eleven of them met or heard Dr. Maximo, but not one has a single questionable association. And all of these, named George, who were in that area, had some trouble with the left eye. Well, it kind of washes out there, Dave. Most of these people wear glasses, and most of them, the left eye is weaker than the right. One man's practically blind in his left eye, but he's 71 years old and stone deaf. Well, this eye business bothers me. There's a chief identifying fact that came to Dr. Maximo's mind. Peters, instead of looking for George by name and profession, let's look for him through the eyes. Oh? You mean through oculists, opticians, eye doctors, clinics? Well, if a man's left eye is so noticeable, it's fair to suppose that he consults somebody about it. This job gets bigger and bigger, Chief. Well, incidentally, include the manufacturers of artificial eyes on that checklist. Okay. The eyes have it. Hiya, baby. Hello, Ed. Tough day? Mm, six of one, six of the other. How about a movie tonight? Ah, huh? oh, hi. I'll get it, hon. Huh? Okay, do that, Eddie. Yeah, hello? George? Uh, yeah. This is Arthur. Oh, uh, hiya. An important job for you, George. In Washington, D.C. Oh? A meeting. It's very dangerous, but it's necessary. I am leaving here tonight. You get a train tomorrow afternoon. Well... When does the uh, uh, customer expect to see me? Tuesday, but... Tuesday? Well, then what's the point of my going tomorrow? I'll leave Monday. You're supposed to take orders without question, George. Well, you know I've got this trouble with my eye. I I've got an appointment with an eye doctor Monday morning. Been trying for weeks to see him. And... Well, in that case... Uh, where'll I find you You in, are to uh... go to the Hotel Finley. Register under your own name. We'll meet after that. That is all. Hotel Finley. So long. Hon, Washington next for me. Big deal. Good morning. Name's Taylor, Counter Spies. I understand you're the leading optician in Kansas City. And I'm... Yes, Mr. Strauss, we're checking all oculists in this section. In case of national emergency, any man with medical understanding might... Oh, by the way, have you any patrons with really serious trouble... In the left eye. I know you're a busy man, Dr. Chode. I just arrived in Columbus this morning, and I understand you're the top eye man in the city. Forty years, Edit, young fellow. Well, well, this is highly confidential, Dr. Chode. But have you a man patient who's a bacteriologist? Bacteria? No, nothing like that. Uh, maybe a man who once worked in a research laboratory on bacteriology? No, not as far as I know. The nearest thing to a lab worker on my list is Edward Stringer. Huh? His left eye... Well, it's really strange. Muscles of the lid are so weak, his left eyelid's practically closed all the time. Only he's no bacteriologist. Understands a lot about medicine, uh, for a layman, mind you. But he's a partner in the Red Arrow Duplicating Company. Red Arrow duplicating? Yes, uh, photostats, uh, blueprints, and so forth. Oh. Thanks very much, Dr. Choate. From Harding, Washington, to C.S. Taylor on assignment, Columbus. Continue check on Edward Stringer. Peters and I flying to join you. And 
this Edward Stringer has been married seven years, Mr. Harding. No children. Five room, two story frame house on Hawthorne Road. Age 33. Wife, Alice, age 30, from Utah. Yes, go on, Taylor. Uh, I've, I've had no chance to get a look at Stringer, but Dr. Choate says his left eyelid is, is almost fully closed all the time. Oh, anybody would remember that. Yeah. Well, go on, Taylor. Well, Stringer and a man named Samuel E. Carpenter together own a blueprint and photostat shop, number 16 Harper Street, in business four years. Stringer's traveled a good deal, according to Carpenter. Well, you didn't explain your interest, I hope. Oh, no, sir, no. I, uh, well, what I did is I arranged with the airlines here to appear as their representative. Oh. That way I could ask how much the partners traveled, and where to, and so on. Smart gag, Taylor. Well, uh, according to Carpenter, Stringer does the traveling for the pair, handles good size orders outside the city. Sam Carpenter mentioned half a dozen cities, and every one of them was on Dr. Maximo's itinerary. Well, does Stringer know anything about bacteriology? Well, Carpenter said that that was one of their business assets, Mr. Harding. Stringer majored in bacteriology at Hillman College. He never graduated, but kept up his interest. I see. You see, that makes their shop useful to firms with technical documents to be duplicated. Oh, that's a good job, Taylor. We're getting hot, Peters. One more visit to Sam Carpenter. He'll know where Edward Stringer is, and we close in. There's a new and very important assignment for you, George. Right here in Washington. What'll it be, Arthur? I'm soon to go home. You are to take my place as chief of contacts. Today and tomorrow, as the others arrive in Washington, they will come here to you, in one pose or another. And there is only one matter. Yeah? That eye of yours. It is so easily remembered. I guess so, and it drives me nuts myself, but... I uh, got a doctor back in Columbus. He says he can fix it. Take maybe six months, eye exercises, maybe even an operation, but... Hey, you expect anyone, George? Maybe it's a chambermaid. I'll tell her to come back later. Oh, yeah? Edward Springer? Uh, yeah. Mind if we come in? Come on, Peter. Hey, just a second. Close the door, Peter. Got it. We're United States counter spy, Springer. We'll have to ask who this other man is. Springer, you have a right not to speak at all. I... I know, but, uh... Well, it's all over, isn't it? Yes, it is, George. Okay. I always expected to get caught. This man has been my boss. He's called Arthur. That's all I know about him. I'll tell you everything else you want to know, all about everybody, even help you catch him. You fool. You traitor. You've got it wrong, Arthur. He's a traitor to us, not to you. Me a traitor? I've been working for peace. What? Make the other side just as strong as the United States, and then neither side will dare go to war. Oh, Stringer, how sick can you get? I've got something there, Peters. It's a question whether a man like this belongs in a penitentiary or a hospital for the mentally ill. Anyway, both of you, you're now under arrest by the United States government. You've just heard another counter-spy report to the American people, brought to you each week at the same time. Next week's report, The Case of the Double-Crossing Defender. Tonight's counter-spy program originated in New York, was directed by Marx B. Loeb, dramatized by Paul R. Milton, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer. Lionel Rico speaking. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.